All right, so in chapter 7 of the book of Job, Job is continuing to ask questions of his friends. They have posited to him, Ephi has uh, posited to him, maybe you've committed sin. What are the sins that you've committed? And Job's going, I didn't commit sin. Where have I committed? If I've done something wrong, help me. I'm not afraid of the truth. I want to know the truth. But I don't think you guys know the truth. The truth is, I have done everything well. So chapter 7, there's a continuation of this discussion as Job is talking with his friends, which is giving us tremendous insight into good gospel understanding of philosophies. A lot of good things for us to learn here. Verse 1, Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of an hireling? And what he's talking about is, isn't there a time appointed for man to die? Like a hireling, if you hire somebody, you know, I'm going to be a servant for X number of days or months or years, and then I'm done. Verse 2, as a servant earnestly desireth the shadow, and as a hireling looketh for the reward of his work, so am I made to possess mal months of vanity and wearisome nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when, I, when shall I rise and the night be gone? And I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Remember that my life is wind. Mine eyes shall no more see good. So he's mentioning here that when, when, it, when it's nighttime, he spends the night wishing it was daytime because he's in pain. He's tossing around. He can't get a good night's sleep. And then during the day, he just does the best he can to survive. He's got worms growing, living in his skin. He's got clods of dust on him. He's, he's trying to heal. He's trying to prevent problems. But it is not working. Verse 8, The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. So he's, he's like, guys, I'm not dead. I'm, I'm in such pain, though. If I died, I wouldn't complain. Because I would be dead, but I'm not dead. Therefore, I am going to complain. I am going to vocalize the anguish that I'm experiencing in sight, the sadness, the, the tremendous frustrations and anxieties that I'm experiencing. That's not necessarily a bad thing to talk about that, basically. He's trying to say, I'm not I'm not committing sin in what I how I'm thinking and doing things. I am talking about my feelings and expressing my perspective of what's going on in my life. I'm telling you my experience and you shouldn't discount my experience. Verse 12, am I a sea or a well that thou settest a watch over me? When I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint. Then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifies me through visions so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than my life. I loathe it. I would not live alway. Let me alone, for my days are vanity. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment? How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone, till I swallow down my spittle? I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou perverser, preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? Why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away mine iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Now he is still in this negative state. He is still struggling to understand what is going on. Why won't you let me die? Why can't this be over with finally? Why can't we deal with this? Why are you guys still here? What's the deal with this? Are you here for a certain time and then you're going to leave? And then I'm still going to be stuck like this. So... He's not, Job's not happy with the situation that he is in. And I don't think he's quite happy with how his friends are treating him in this situation. So in the next chapter, we're going to hear more of their side of the story now as the conversation goes back to them. We'll see you then.